Do you want to know how to create realistic looking fur with coloured pencils? In this video I'll show you three different types of fur and three different techniques that you can use to get these results. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. So for all of these techniques I will be using the Clairefontaine pastel matte paper. I'm also using a variety of different coloured pencils in the wax or oil based and it doesn't really matter which brand you have, all of these techniques are going to work for all of the types of coloured pencils. So I just got in a really light layer of coloured pencil just to show where the darkest values and the lightest values and the different colours were in this swatch of fur. And then I went in with a light um, luminance coloured pencil and it's a wax based coloured pencil so I find that it works a little bit better for blending it out. And there are other wax based pencils that you can use for this as well but I've just got the luminance on hand so I used that one. And I didn't use a white colour, I used almost an off white or a cream coloured pencil. And the reason I'm doing this is because having the lighter layers at the bottom means that when you get to the last part of this technique where you scrape off some of the top layers, it's going to show the lighter colours underneath. So if you added a dark colour underneath to blend, when you scrape the top layers off, it's going to reveal a dark colour and that's not really the technique that we're going for. We're trying to reveal highlights by scraping away the top layers. So to do that, you need to have your lighter colours underneath to be able to show through. And using the wax paste pencils to blend also helps smooth out each layer individually to blend all the colours into each other a little bit better and it stops having that grainy looking texture at the end of the piece. The first type of fur is kind of a short and stiff harsh looking fur and I'll be using the layering process so I won't be using any solvents or anything like that to blend. So I'll basically continue this process of layering really lightly with the coloured pencil and then blending it out with a wax based pencil and then as the layers develop I'll be adding slightly darker coloured pencils to hype up that contrast. And just continue doing it this way until your piece looks as smooth as you want it to be and then I'll show you the final technique which is using a scraping tool. When you're drawing fur, make sure that you pay attention to your reference photo. I'm using a bunch of different colours in this because it's not just a orangey coloured fur, it's got reds and browns and cream colours and oranges and all different sorts of colours in it. So you, as you can see, I'm using a variety of different pencils for this so that it looks a bit more natural in the end, it's not just one colour. Even though the fur is quite short, make sure that you don't have your hairs going in the same direction and the same length. So make sure that you vary your, sh your strokes slightly so that the hairs look more natural. If you have them all lined up with the same length and the same start and stop points it, and you know in really straight rows, it really won't look natural. So make sure that you curve some of the hairs and then have some going in different directions or slightly longer and start your strokes at a different point and stop them at a different point and that can help it look less rigid and a, and a lot more natural. Just wanted to slow it down to show you what I'm doing and I'm just using a Stanley knife and this is just basically one that you would find in your toolbox, an ordinary um, Stanley knife, but you can use a craft knife that's specifically for this if you like. Um, basically you want to scrape off really gently the top layer of coloured pencil just to reveal the bottom layers of coloured pencil and this is what I was talking about earlier where if you have the creamy coloured or lighter coloured pencils underneath that will show through. So if you had those darker coloured pencils underneath that's what's going to show through now and it just won't look quite right when you're trying to make highlights using this technique. If you find that you're scraping off too much or it's indenting the paper you're probably pressing too hard and a good tip that I have is to have the blade facing towards you, like you can see on mine, the sharp bit of the blade is actually not facing the paper, it's the other way around. And that way you're less likely to accidentally scrape too much off than if you had it facing the other way around. I hope that makes sense, but you really want to try and do it as lightly as possible. You're not trying to indent the paper, you're just trying to scrape off the top layer of coloured pencil to reveal the layers underneath. And when you're working with fur in general, you make sure that you pay attention to the layering process. So when you look at a dog or a cat, you can see that the fur lays on top of the fur that's underneath and you want to create your artwork this way. So I started at the top of my piece by scraping away these layers 
And then as I get to the bottom, I'm scraping away over the top of the previous layers so that it looks like the fur is actually laying on top of each other. And once you're finished creating those highlights with the craft knife, you can actually go back in over the top with more colors just to soften out those edges and create a little bit more color and depth in there. And then you can go back over the top with a craft knife again just to brighten up some of the highlights that you might have blended out a bit too much. So the next type of fur is a black kind of longer curly fur and I'm using the OMS or odorless mineral spirits or a solvent technique for this one and I use this technique the most because it's much faster than the first one so a major problem that I see with beginners when they're using this technique is that they don't have enough pigment down on the paper before they go in with the OMS so just make sure that you've got quite a solid layer of color pencil on your paper for the solvent to actually blend together because if you don't have enough pigment down it can still look grainy after you add the OMS. Also the term OMS or odorless mineral experience or solvent is pretty much all the same thing. You can use odorless turpentine as well if you like. I use an art spectrum odorless solvent but you can use any sort of solvent that you would use for oil painting as well. Whichever one you choose, just make sure you buy it from an art store and not a hardware store, so that's intended for art use. And I usually keep a little bit in a container that has a lid on it, so that way I can put the lid back on when I'm not using it, just so that you're not breathing in the harsh chemicals unnecessarily. And there's a few different ways that you can apply the OMS. I usually just use an, a brush that I have lying around, but you can also use cotton tips as well if you don't have any brushes around. And I always keep some paper towel or a cloth to the side so when you dip your brush into the OMS you want to just get rid of the excess OMS off your brush so that you're not applying too much to your paper because you can actually damage your paper that way and you really don't need that much on your brush to be able to blend it. And you can see as soon as I add the OMS the colours just dissolve and it creates this vibrant saturated colour and the graininess starts to go away as well. The paper is still a bit wet obviously so when the OMS dries it won't be as saturated as this but it's still quite a lot more vibrant than if you didn't add the OMS to begin with. So when you're working with OMS or a solvent you're actually blending the wax and the oil in the binders in the pencils and that way when you're layering on top of each other there's not as much of that wax and oil build up as you get with the layering technique where you don't actually blend it out with the solvent. And blending out the wax and the oil binder in combination with using the pastel mat or a sanded paper means that the tooth of the paper doesn't get filled up and flattened as quickly as if you were doing the layering technique by building up layers and layers of the wax and oil pigments like in the first technique. And because of that, it allows you to be able to add lighter colours on top of darker colours quite a lot easier than if you were using a watercolour paper, for example. So it's not too much of a problem problem to be able to add those white highlights or flyaway hairs on top of the OMS technique and I usually don't use the scraping technique when I'm using OMS because there's not really much of a reason to use it and also there's not as much pigment and wax and pencil down on the paper to be able to scrape off the top layers to reveal underneath because you've already dissolved that pigment into the paper with the solvent or the OMS. So when you're using the craft knife with this technique, it can really damage the paper if you're not careful. So I just avoid it pretty much altogether. So this is just a layering process. Once your OMS is dry, you can add more layers on top and then continue to repeat the process until you get the look that you're after. With sanded paper, you can add many more layers than watercolor paper. So I find this technique work, works really well on this pastel mat and it can really look more like a painting than a drawing in the end. When you're drawing any type of fur, make sure that you're creating clumps of fur instead of individual hairs because it will make it look more natural. So when you look at a hair on someone's head or on an animal, you aren't seeing individual hairs unless you're like one centimeter away from them. You're seeing clumps of hair. So when you draw your hair, your brain can trick you because it knows that every hair is individual. So you try and draw it like that, but in reality, you won't see every hair individually. So try and draw it in clumps of colors or um, clusters. Also black fur is never actually just black. It always has other colors in it like blues or reds or purples. So if you're using a white or gray for highlighted strands, make sure that you glaze over it with another color like blue so that it doesn't stay white or gray. It can make the animal look really old like it has gray hairs instead of highlights from the sun. So when you come to add those individual hairs or highlights right at the last layer, I use a Derwent Drawing Chinese White pencil and this is the 
creamiest wax wax based pencil that I've found so far. It doesn't really keep its point very easily, so you have to sharpen it quite a lot. But it really does get in those really light coloured flyaway hairs on the end, like you can see me doing here. Adding in those flyaway hairs just gives the piece a little bit more realism. Rather than having all the hair sleeked into one um, clump, it's got those little flyaway hairs like you would in nature. And then I usually finish off with a dark coloured pencil to really accentuate those flyaway hairs or to darken up any areas that need it or just to soften any of those highlights that I think are a little bit too harsh. So the third technique is to use mixed media and I've chosen to use a watercolour pencil base and I'm using the pencils by Faber-Castell that are water soluble and I can't remember the name of them, um, Albert Dura or something like that. Sorry, I can't pronounce it. Um, but they're basically the same colours as in the Faber-Castell Polychromo set, which is a coloured pencil set, but they're water soluble. So they're really quite useful if you're wanting to use the exact same coloured pencil on top of a watercolour base because you can use both of those sets in combination. And in comparison to using OMS for the base, with the watercolour pencils you don't need to have as much pigment down on the paper for it to blend. It's just that if you did have more pigment down it does become more saturated more quickly but you can um, build it up in layers if you want to add a light layer first and then add another layer of watercolour pencil on top of that as well. Just make sure that you let the first layer completely dry before you go in with any more pencil because if you go over the top of a wet piece of paper with pencil it can really damage the paper that way. This is my favourite way of using mixed media with coloured pencil but you can also use watercolour paints or markers. Just keep in mind that if you do use alcohol markers like the Copic markers they aren't light fast and they will fade over time so just keep that in mind if you do choose to do that. If you're working in mixed media, just make sure that you put your mediums down in the right order. And what I mean by that is that you can't put water-based mediums on top of wax or oil-based mediums. So obviously watercolour pencils are water-based, but if you add the coloured pencils first, which are either wax or oil-based, and then you put water on top of that, it doesn't mix well, it's not archival. So just make sure that you put the water-based things down before any wax or oil-based things. And you can build up a few layers of watercolour pencil or watercolours or markers before you add your pencils on top. But as soon as you start going in with coloured pencils, don't go back to using watercolour on top of your pencils. And having this watercolour layer as the base layer is a really quick and easy way to fill up the tooth of the paper with colour. So that way when you go on top with the coloured pencils, you don't have to be too worried about filling up the tooth of the paper with the coloured pencils because you did it in the first layer already. So good thing about the watercolour base is that you can pretty much use any technique that you want on top of it. So you can go and do the layering process like I did in the first piece where you scrape away the top layer of coloured pencil. Just make sure that you have enough pigment down so that you're not scraping your paper away as well. And same with the OMS or the solvent technique. You can use that as well. Just make sure that you have enough layers of pigment down on top of your watercolour to blend out with the solvent. And I haven't really found an issue with the solvent lifting up any of the watercolour layers, just as long as you have enough pigment down to blend it out with the solvent first. And make sure that you're dabbing off that excess solvent off your brush before you go into your piece. When you're working with fur that's coming in all different directions like this, where it's really quite curly and it's a bit all over the place, a good tip is to get your reference photo and blur it out, so that way you can just see the the parts that are darker and the parts that are lighter and the slightly different colours and then start your base layer that way so just put in the dark colours and the light colours and don't worry about all the detail in the first few layers because you're going to be building up the layers you don't need to worry so much about that in the first few layers and then as you build your layers up you can add more and more detail into each layer so you can see here I'm actually using the OMS to blend again and then I'm going back in with that Derwent drawing Chinese white to get the lightest bits on top of the darker areas underneath. So you can see that the watercolour base is actually really quite versatile. You can use many different techniques on top of it. So I really quite like using this as well. Another mixed media option which I haven't shown here is to use pan pastels as a base. And a lot of people do this but I actually tried it and I don't like how the matte finish of the pastel compares with the slightly shinier effect that coloured pencil can have. I find that the coloured pencil doesn't layer on top as easy as the other techniques. 
And honestly, I have pastel pencils as well. So if I'm going to use pastel, I might as well just use the pastel pencils on top for the detail. If you don't know what pan pastels are, it's basically a soft pastel compressed into a cake form. And I use them quite a lot with pastels. I really love using them. I just find that they don't go too well with colored pencil in my opinion. But again, a lot of people do use them for with colored pencil or use them just for the background of colored pencil. So if you have them, give it a go because a lot of people do like it and you might like it as well. If you found this tutorial useful, there's a playlist on the screen with other colored pencil tips and tutorials that I think you might enjoy. So click on that and I'll see you over there.